I believe that the Bible is God's inspired word because of the fulfillment of prophecies. In the Old Testament, there are more than 300 predictions concerning the Messiah and his first coming that Jesus fulfilled when he came to earth. Well, there are many prophecies that we could look at. The Bible says that he would be born of a virgin. We know that that took place. The Bible says that he would be born in Bethlehem of Judah. That took place. Daniel chapter 9 says that he, the Messiah, would have to be born before the destruction of the temple and the city of Jerusalem in 70 AD by Titus and the Roman army. And so Jesus fulfilling those prophecies. Psalm 22 graphically portrays the cruel death, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. In fact, Psalm 22, which graphically details the crucifixion, was written 1,000 years before crucifixion was a method of punishment by the Romans. The Old Testament is replete with prophecies anticipating the Messiah. For instance, Isaiah 61 prophesied that Messiah would preach good tidings to the poor and liberty to the captives, while Deuteronomy 18.18 18 declared that Messiah would be a prophet. Zechariah wrote of Messiah these words, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you! He is just and having salvation lowly and riding on a donkey. And the prophet Isaiah wrote this concerning Messiah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. In addition, the Holy Spirit predicted the crucifixion 1,000 years before it was invented. They pierced my hands and my feet. As well, God spoke through Zechariah, And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me, whom they pierced. What are the chance factors? that Jesus could have fulfilled these 300 predictions. One of the predictions is that Bethlehem would be his birthplace. Now, what chances are there for a individual to be born in Bethlehem? Well, you take the average population of the earth from the time of Micah's prophecy, and you compare it with the average prop, uh, population of Bethlehem. And you find that only one in 280,000 people were born in Bethlehem. The minute you say Bethlehem would be his birthplace, you've eliminated the vast majority of people from claiming to be the Messiah. It declared that he would be betrayed by a friend for 30 pieces of silver. It said the silver would then be thrown down in the temple in the house of the Lord, and it would be used to buy a potter's field. Jesus fulfilled over 300 Old Testament prophecies. Uh, I, I have a, a mere bachelor's degree in math. I know a little bit about probability. And uh, it couldn't happen by chance. Furthermore, there are things that you just couldn't manipulate uh, either. Uh, for example, it was prophesied he would be born in Bethlehem. How do you get yourself born in Bethlehem? Uh, it was prophesied that he would rise from the dead. How do you rise from the dead if you're not really God? It was prophesied, Daniel 9, the very day that he would ride into Jerusalem on that donkey. Now, how could you possibly... You've got to be born at the right time in history. And how can you manipulate a crowd, a crowd of people that lined the road down from the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem and hailed him as the Messiah? How are you going to do that? Every detail of his betrayal the price of the transaction, where it took place, who finally ends up with the money, uh, and on and on it goes. Uh, incredible details, all laid out in advance. 
And no one can dispute that because the Old Testament was translated into Greek three centuries before Christ was born, the so-called Septuagint version. We have four copies of those. Amazingly, Jesus fulfilled all the Messianic prophecies exactly, though they were written hundreds of years before his birth. The probability of fulfilling just eight of these prophecies has been calculated to be one chance in 10 to the 28th power. Certainly, Jesus is the Messiah, God the Son, the Savior of the world. When Luke wrote to his friend Theophilus, the book known as the Acts of the Apostles, he said that Jesus showed himself alive after his passion or death by many infallible proofs. With Jesus, there were many eyewitnesses of his resurrection. In fact, Paul tells us that there was over 500 at one time. The capstone of Christianity is the resurrection of Christ. The evidence that Jesus rose from the dead is overwhelming. First, the New Testament reports that hundreds of eyewitnesses saw Jesus after he rose. Yeah, if I told you that um, John F. Kennedy was killed in Dealey Plaza by a bow and arrow, could I ever sell you that story? Of course not. Why? because among us are eyewitnesses to that event. And when Paul wrote his first letter to the Corinthians, among his audience were hundreds of people, because over 500 people witnessed the Lord's return. So he didn't have the burden of, of, uh, of trying to create that out of thin air. The people that he was writing to were aware of it. Second, the Roman and Jewish authorities were never able to produce Christ's body, though they sealed and guarded the tomb. There are two major responses to the resurrection. The first is Rome, which is, when you read in the Gospels, is quite muted, uh, bearing in mind that uh, there were a strong military power in Palestine at the time, and they could have um, had the, the disciples stolen the body, they could have got the might of Rome to produce that body, but they didn't, which suggests to me that the resurrection was genuine. If the resurrection of Jesus Christ didn't occur, it would have been very easy to disprove point to the body. The body of Jesus Christ was not found. Third, the apostles, who were cowards during Jesus' trials and crucifixion, became bold witnesses of his resurrection after they met the risen Lord, even to their dying breath. With regard to the disciples, um, their initial response is one of fear, uh, intimidation of the Jews, but after the resurrection there's a great boldness. Um, so, again, that suggests to me that something happened that changed their lives, that they were willing even to die as a result of the gospel that they preached regarding the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Suddenly you find in a few weeks' time that these men are going forth into all the world to proclaim a risen Christ. It is quite evident that the change of heart that they experienced was because they had truly seen the risen Christ. There is no other logical explanation for it. And these men, all but one of them, lost their lives proclaiming Christ, him crucified and him risen from the dead. Only one of them reached a ripe old age and that was John. So it is quite clear that the evidence of history in the lives of these men confirms the resurrected Christ. Furthermore, Jesus' death and resurrection changed the course of history and rewrote time from B.C., meaning before Christ, to A.D., or Anno Domini, meaning the year of our Lord. Anyone rejecting Christ's resurrection or the Bible as the inspired Word of God is rejecting a fact proven more absolutely than any other fact in the world. Someone has said that the Bible is like an anvil that the hammers of men have been pounding against it for centuries. The hammers have long worn out, but the anvil still stands. And so the Bible, God's Word, people have attacked it for years. It still stands, and the attackers have long fallen.